Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. In a letter addressed to all bishops in Japan, Pope Francis told them that many challenges in Japan make the church's evangelizing call to be the salt and light of hope and meaning even more urgent today. The Pope mentioned some of the many worrying problems the country faces, including a high divorce rate, suicide, religious indifference, and an obsession for work and earnings. A highly developed nation, the Pope said, can produce material wealth, but also material, spiritual, and moral poverty and exclusion. Pope Francis said, like the tiny mustard seed, the minority Catholic Church in Japan has been entrusted with a great mission, and the lack of priests and religious there must never impede the call to evangelize. Rather, he said, it should inspire them to tirelessly seek new workers for the Lord's vineyard. The Pope's remarks came in a letter addressed to all bishops in Japan that was to be delivered by Cardinal Fernando Foloni, prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, who was visiting Japan September 17th through the 26th. More news from the Vatican. In 2019, a special anniversary will be celebrated during the month dedicated to missions. Rome Reports has more on the plans for the extraordinary month. In 2019, the month dedicated to missions, October, will be different than the ones before. It will mark the 100th anniversary of Benedict XV's encyclical, Maximum Elud, which is considered to be the charter of modern missions. Pope Francis confirmed that this initiative will be carried out during a hearing in June, addressed to the participants in the assembly of the Pontifical Mission Societies. The Pope is clear that it is necessary to renew the ardor and missionary passion because, in fact, we need more missionaries. The fundamental question is to discover because I don't think that it is known that the mission is the proper name of the relationship between Christ's church and the world. Though the Pope will preside over some public events from Rome, the Vatican wants every diocese to live this extraordinary month with absolute freedom. What we would like to make clear is that those responsible for organizing this extraordinary month can choose how to do it according to their needs. What we will offer will be the material to inspire, provoke, and stimulate reflection. Pope Francis wants this extraordinary missionary month to rest on these four points. First, for each Christian to strengthen his or her personal encounter with Jesus. Next, he also hopes people will rediscover the value of saints and martyrs, to deepen the doctrine and to practice charity. With these four elements, this is Pope Francis's goal. Pero quiero lío en las dioses. Quiero que se salga fuera. Quiero que la iglesia salga a la calle. News from around the world, four female students from Boston College were victims of an acid attack at a train station in France over the weekend. The four juniors studying abroad were sprayed by an acid solution outside of the St. Charles train station in Marseille. The students were treated at a hospital after the attack and released the same day. Two of the students were treated for facial burns and the other two were not physically injured but were treated for shock. French police arrested a 41-year-old French woman who they described as disturbed and suffering from mental illness. Police said the incident was not related to terrorism. Two of the girls have already posted on their Facebook pages asking for prayers for the woman who attacked them. University spokesman Jack Dunn said they are very proud of the students and the gracious manner in which they have handled themselves throughout this ordeal. All four of the students plan to remain in Europe to continue their studies. In news from around the world, a priest is asking young people around the world to sign a letter to encourage Pope Francis to canonize Blessed Pierre Giorgio at the upcoming Synod on Young People taking place in October of 2018. The website says the letter is written in the voice of, wor of the world's young people, but it may be signed by anyone. Rome Reports has more on this young priest's effort. Three of Pope Francis's most popular themes have been the youth, reaching out to the peripheries, and the joy of being a Christian. Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, a young man beatified by John Paul II, is one of the greatest modern-day examples of this. The son of wealthy parents, Pierre Giorgio had a contagious spark for life and an enormous heart for those in need. When he died at 24, after contracting polio from those he helped, people flooded the streets of Turin, honoring a man whose pure goodness changed the lives of many. In that short span of 24 years, uh, he was able to love our Lord and love his people in such a remarkable and beautiful way, who didn't found any congregations, he didn't do um, any of the things that you typically think of saints of doing. Instead, he just helped each person that he could find every day to help, uh, and ended up having this huge effect. 
These effects have far from subsided, which is exactly why Father Michael created this website, PierreGiorgioLetter.org. It is a virtual letter to unite those around the world who have a devotion to this young man with a specific end goal in mind. The letter is um, to Pope Francis asking him to canonize Blessed Pier Giorgio at the upcoming synod for uh, young people. We don't have to wait until like our vocational path is clear for us. No, we just do what each day we're presented with, what uh, opportunity we have to help this person or help that person, and that's what sainthood is. Since its launch on May 20th, the anniversary of Blessed Pier Giorgio's beatification by John Paul II, the signatures have come from all ends of the planet. And finally in the news, Pope Francis is launching his global migration campaign on September 27th entitled Share the Journey. This historic two-year campaign of Caritas Internationalis is aimed to promote encounters between people on the move and people living in the countries they are leaving, passing through, or arriving in. The U.S. Bishops Catholic Relief Services and Catholic Charities USA, along with 160 other Caritas members around the world, are sponsoring national and local events to provide opportunities for migrants and members of host communities to meet and share their stories. To coincide with the official launch in Rome by Pope Francis on September 27th, Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston will preside at a 10 a.m. Mass at St. Mary's Parish in Lynn, Massachusetts, with St. Mary's High School and Boston College High School students, along with members of the Haitian and Latino and other immigrant communities. There will be a nationwide week of prayer and action across the U.S. from October 7th through the 13th. And you can find resources, including a toolkit with sample prayers, announcements, and ideas for parish leaders to help launch the Share the Journey campaign at CRS.org. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.